Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul. Once again, we thank you for visiting us and watching this video. As always, we welcome you to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Tonight, I want to talk a few minutes about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is, as the name suggests, is the disease of the myocardium. You remember the three basic types of cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. First of all, you remember when we talked about dilated cardiomyopathy, we said that it was due to systolic dysfunction. So, dilated cardiomyopathy is due to systolic dysfunction, whereas uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is due to diastolic dysfunction. That distinction is uh, very, very important to remember. Now, let us talk a few minutes about the pathophysiology. As the name suggests, there is hypertrophy of cardiac muscle. And this hypertrophy mainly involves the septum, the interventricular septum between the right ventricle and left ventricle. Because of this hypertrophy, the space within the left ventricle, it decreases. So the filling of the ventricle is actually impaired. And as a result, blood does not come adequately into the left ventricle. The filling pressures the increase and uh, there is also the backflow of the blood into the left atrium. Over the time, blood accumulates in excessive amounts in the left atrium and that might also cause atrial fibrillation. Over the time, it might also cause arrhythmias and uh, emboli to be formed from left atrium. So, that is the basic uh, pathophysiology of Hockham. The Hockham, first of all, let me describe the most important uh, cardinal features. As from the name, you can say it is due to the cardiac muscle hypertrophy. Secondly, there is diastolic dysfunction. And uh, thirdly, there is outflow obstruction. So, that is the very, very important point. There is outflow obstruction. That might actually cause to a sudden death. That's why if the question is like this, a young athlete suddenly died. What might be the most common cause? How come? Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, symptoms and signs. The most important symptom you need to remember is dyspnea because the blood is being accumulated in the left atrium and it causes the back pressure over the lungs causing lung congestion which results in the shortness of breath and also the chest pain because some of these uh, hypertrophied uh, cardiac muscle can get ischemia. That's why sometimes on EKG you might show infralateral Q waves because there is infralateral myocardial infection in these patients. So, Q waves is a diagnostic indicator for myocardial ischemia in these patients. And as you can predict, you can also see atrial fibrillation because of left atrial pressures increase over the time and the atrial function gets impaired. Now, signs. The most important thing you need to remember is bisphyrian carotid pulse. That's very, very characteristic of Hockham. And then triple apical impulse, then a loud S4. So, those are the three important things. And also this uh, loud systolic murmur as the blood is being pumped over the aortic valve that causes uh, systolic murmur along the left sternal border and it gets intensified with uh, Valsalva maneuver. It gets intensified with upright posture. That's very, very important because those are the 
clues to differentiate this systolic murmur from the systolic murmur caused by the aortic stenosis. So those are very, very important points to remember. Now having said symptoms and signs, you can easily predict what you would see on the diagnostic tests. EKG could be normal. Sometimes it could show Q waves as I said because some of these patients develop infralateral myocardial infarction. And uh, if you take an X-ray, what do you see? You would see cardiomegaly, that could be said. And if you take an echocardiogram, what could be seen? Again, cardiomegaly. You can see the large intraventricular septum, the hypertrophic cardiac muscle. You can see the constricted left ventricle. You can see the obstruction of the outflow. You can see the motion of the anterior valve of the mitral valve because of the uh, outflow obstruction. So those are the main things in diagnostic studies. In fact, uh, there are other studies like myocardial perfusion imaging because some of the heart muscle, cardiac muscle cannot get perfused enough. You can also do cardiac MRI to see the uh, hypertrophy and uh, cardiac catheterization to evaluate the coronary vessels. Now let us talk a few minutes about treatment. The most important thing you need to remember is beta blockers. They are the mainstay of therapy for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because beta blockers, they reduce the heart rate and they are also, they reduce that myocardial demand, the cardiac demand and that gives a lot of time for diastole and that that make that, that gives time to refill the ventricles adequately. So ventricles gets adequate supply, adequate filling of blood and they could function well. And, it, and, and beta blockers they also reduce the demand also calcium channel blockers like verapamil, they improve the diastolic dysfunction. You can also think about uh, drugs like disopramide because of its negative inotropic effects. And dual chamber pacing, that's very important because it prevents the progression of hypertrophy and obstruction. So dual chamber pacing and non-surgical septal ablation Non-surgical septal ablation is carried out by injection of alcohol into these septal arteries. What happens is alcohol goes into those septal arteries and it uh, causes inflammation of those arteries and finally causes uh, fibrosis of that cardiac muscle. So non-surgical septal ablation and if it does not work, you go for myotomy, myomectomy that is uh, surgically cutting off that extra tissue from the heart. So those are the most important points. One thing you need to remember is that in young athletes, sudden death, those are the clue words. Think of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. If you see those words, sudden death in an athlete, think of hokam. And the clues are systolic murmur, S4, sound, bisphyrian scarotid pulse, dyspnea and chest pain as symptoms, diastolic dysfunction and the mainstay of treatment is beta blockers. That's the number one. So remember those things and I hope you answer well any question that comes on how come. As usual, Visit us at uh, www.usmlevideos.net, that is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you. Have a good day.